Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I'm Ruth Aguela. Well, the presidency has continued to react to the aftermath of destruction caused by looters masquerading on the Rienzer's protests, with President Buhari condemning violent acts and calling for peace. Najat Tijani brings us the details. In a statement signed by Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garbashi, who President Buhari condemned the loss of lives and appealed for peace and brotherhood, expressing optimism that the judicial panel of inquiry set up by the Lagos state government will assist the nation in getting justice to peaceful protesters who lost their lives, security men who were murdered, and property owners whose assets were vandalized and looted. The president said he avoided going into a debate about the Lekki Tollgate incident until all facts were established. Appeal to the good people of Nigeria to maintain peace and brotherhood as the machinery of the government and the wheel of justice turn against the perpetrators of murder, arson, stealing, rape, assault and malicious damage to public and private property. Advising Nigerians not to turn against one another in hate, President Buhari says it is important that the police and other security agencies continue to restore calm and normalcy as quickly as possible. He says his administration is working hard through many pragmatic ways to reduce the hardship of millions of unemployed, warning that resorting to widespread attacks and organized looting and plundering of public and private property in many states inimical to public good and stand condemned. As a government which has launched a massive crackdown on corruption is saddened that a legitimate and peaceful protest has turned into a free-for-all vandalism and looting. Families must turn back children who bring home unaccounted goods in the same way wives must ask their husbands to return looted items brought home. Criminal actions being witnessed can weaken and erode the confidence of people and that of foreign businesses in investing in the economy. These incidents, the president says, do not reflect well on any society. They are wrong and condemnable and should not be supported by reasonable members of the society. In line with this, President Bahari commends the decision of the Lagos State Ministry of Justice to prosecute 229 suspects arrested by the police for allegedly using the NSARS protest to destroy and loot public and private property. The president says his administration has taken note of the grievances of the people and has shown a clear determination to take all necessary measures to address the complaints. The violence must stop, President Buhari says, and condemns hate messages and eviction notices to ethnic and religious groups. The right of all citizens to live and work in any part of the country is a constitutional right and will be defended by the government. Well, in another development, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mohamed Musa Bello, has ordered the arrest and prosecution of those who broke into the FCT warehouse in Gwagwalada Area Council and carted away food items. The minister gave the order during an emergency security meeting on the ugly development in the territory. Let's hear more from Shuaibu Onoze Yakubo. Minister Mohammed Musa Bello, while advising looters to return the food items carted away, disclosed that there will be massive deployment of security agencies to safeguard factories and warehouses at Edu Industrial Area. He said the ugly development is not in any way connected to the NSAS protest, but he brought this stealing by hoodlums, which must be condemned in strong terms. As you know, a number of government uh, warehouses have been vandalized and it has now escalated to private warehouses. As a matter of fact, hoodlums and thieves have entered many factories in uh, our Edu industrial uh, area where they are just vandalizing uh, finished goods as well as fixtures and physical items within the factories. This is totally sad and unacceptable and that is why we held this meeting and we reviewed some of this situation. We have 
called upon all the security agencies uh, within the membership of the FCT Security Committee to deploy massively, uh, deploy massively in the do industrial area so that uh, properties and factories will be protected. Particularly, we have also seen that uh, there is this desire by some to escalate this into tribal, ethnic, and even religious confrontation, which I think is going to be wrong, because this is totally against what the FCT stands for. Area council chairmen and other community leaders are advised to reach out to the people with the aim of pleading with them against looting government food reserves in the territory. Shaibu Oluzeyaku, NTA News. And in River State, the Commissioner of Police, Joseph Muken, has condemned in strong terms the one to destruction of lives and property at Uyibo Police Station while pledging the command's readiness to stop at nothing to bring the perpetrators of this dastardly act to justice. Ijoma Ugweke has details. CP Mokan led commanders of the sister security agencies in the state to Oyibo local government area to assess the level of destruction in the area command. Investigations revealed that hoodlums suspected to be members of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra under the guise of NSAS protest invaded Oyibo police command, AFAM and Umwebule police stations where four police formations were arrested killing two policemen and over 50 vehicles to include armored personnel carrier set ablaze. We have assessed and we've seen everything for ourselves. Though comprehensive investigation is still in progress, it will be updated at the end of the investigation. Most of the vehicles we see are, are brought by civilians for safekeeping, but unfortunately they got burned. The CP who described the incidents as ill-conceived and most unfortunate charged the investigation team to expedite action on the attack. Of course, since the incident, nobody has assessed this area. And uh, with the aid of the military and the joint mobile patrol, we were able to assess this place for the first time after the incident to assure them that they will be protected to the best of our capabilities. We have the capacity to protect them. While condoling families of the officers who lost their lives in the attack, the CPH other sister security agencies to guide against further breach of peace and restore public confidence with renewed sense of security. He appealed to residents of the state to remain calm and go about their lawful activities without breach of law and order. In Port Harcourt, Ijo Mugweke, NTA News. All right, let's take you now to Washington State to discourse on the situation. I'm now being joined um, via Zoom with the special advisor to Washington State Governor on security matters, that is Mrs. Abiodun Ige. She's going to be talking to us on what the situation is like in Washington State. Um, good afternoon, ma'am. Can you hear me? Good afternoon. All right. Now, last week, we know that the Ocean State government imposed 24-hour curfew. What is the situation as of today? Any hope of relaxing it soon? And just before you go right away to answer that question, can you, you know, turn a bit your, you know, the visual is a bit dark. We can't really see your face. Yeah. Okay. I think that's better now. Good afternoon. Okay. Go ahead. Did you hear my question? Yes, I had your okay, question. So go ahead. You are asking if the coffee will be relaxed. Yes. I want to tell you that this is the second time the government will impose a coffee because it it was initially relaxed and then the the hoodlums took advantage of it and went back on the street. And that mm -hmm. is why the government had to impose a second curfew. So we are watching to see that the area is calm, the state is calm completely before we we'll think of, before the government will think of relaxing the curfew. Okay, and we also hear that the government has also given looters 72 hours to return all that they've stolen, both from government and private um, individuals. Now, what has been the response from the hoodlums or looters? Quite impressive. Many of them have started returning some of the looted items. We have started receiving calls from people 
that they have uh, they have seen the looted items in some areas and the government has already formed a recovery committee that would work on that Okay, and if the government has given this grace, talking about the 72 um, hours, why another order of going house to house search, you know, for looters and the loot um, recovery of this loot? Um, isn't that going to be confrontational again? And just before you go ahead, ma'am, we need you to be a bit stable. It's like you're moving. Okay. Uh, I'm not aware that anybody is going from house to house. Okay. What what they have been doing is if there is Okay, we apologize. We've lost that signal from Oshun State. That is the special advisor to Oshun State government, Mrs. Abiodun Ige, just giving a situation report from that end. We're heading right away to Lagos to join Adeola. Let's find out what's happening there. Adeola. Monday, the first working day, is associated with hustling, propelled by pressure to meet demands. But today in Lagos, the situation is a sharp contrast as the struggle to rebuild key infrastructure and other businesses looted and vandalized by suspected hoodlums in the metropolis is yet to start. Michael Olaleye reports. This is the popular Tafawa Balewa Square in Lagos, housing a vibrant bus terminal with an average of 20,000 passenger capacity daily. Today, the environment is asserted, an indication that in spite of the current peaceful atmosphere brought about by the relaxation of the curfew, normal activities are yet to fully pick up. I discovered that it is even the average Nigerian that is suffering from the circumstance from the whole thing that had happened. Now there is no BRT today. People are even afraid to come out. You can see that the population is so scanty. The people are just very few. For places like Ujue Lebra and the mainland, Ithato, empty streets, non features skeletal vibe. I noticed that all the security personnel were not on ground, right from Ikeja through Third Mainland Bridge down to the island. Uh, the government needs to draft uh, policemen and security personnel back to the road. With the interventions of His Excellency, Executive Governor of Lagos State and the APC National Leader, by tomorrow I think uh, you see a lot of people going to their place of work and it should be a normal uh, business day. One key trait still missing among Lagos residents is the confidence needed to revert to routine life, a situation that is likely to change in the coming days with the assurance of continued security of lives and property by government. In Lagos, Michael Lale, NT News. Now, the sitting of the Lagos State Government Judicial Panel of Inquiry and Restitution for victims of SARS-related abuses, also mandated to investigate Lekki toll gate crisis, has been adjourned till Tuesday 27th for public hearing. Chairman of the panel, Justice Doris Okuobi, premised the adjournment on the absence of some yet-to-be-sworn-in members. Abolore Ogbara reports. The duration of the Judicial Panel of Inquiry and Restitution was a proactive measure taken by Governor Babajide Sonwolu to display his commitment to addressing cases of alleged police brutality melted on residents. With his additional responsibility of investigating the happenings on the 20th of October at Lekki Tollgate, Chairman of the panel, Justice Doris Okuwobi, urged the public to send in their petitions and evidences to facilitate the process of the case. The sooner the presentations are made, the better it is for us, so that we have enough time to look into all the claims, make recommendations, and pay compensation where necessary. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has expressed his full support to the panel and expressed confidence in the outcome of his findings, which advice to all state panels of inquiry to ensure justice is served on behalf of the peaceful protesters and law enforcement agents who lost their lives during the NSAS crisis in Lagos, Abolore Ogbara, NT News. 
The NSAS protest that was hijacked by hoodlums has affected all spheres in the country. The education sector, which was gradually recovering from delays caused by COVID-19 restrictions, has suffered another setback with the closure of schools and the suspension of the ongoing Senior Schools Certificate Examination Council, NECO. Ingino John Adams reports. This year, the academic calendar in Nigeria has been altered by two major facts. It started with the coronavirus pandemic, which led to the closure of schools for almost seven months. When the government announced the reopening of schools, it was with joy that the students and pupils returned to their learning environment. The euphoria was, however, cut short when state governments had to shut the schools down after the NSAS protest was hijacked by hoodlums. This has led to the indefinite suspension of the Senior Secondary Schools Certificate Examination by the National Examination Council. A statement by the Council's Public Relations Officer says the decision is to ensure the safety of students and teachers in view of the current security challenges faced by some states as well as in compliance with the curfew in place. It has further shown us that NECO as a body has our safety at heart. Safety should come first. It is those that are alive that will write exam. Exam can always be done when the country is more settled and there is rest everywhere. Once again, the students are back at home waiting for a resolution of the issues on ground after which they can return to proceed with their examination. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. Well, Nationwide will continue after this break. Do stay with us. On that break, she just called. The recent genuine concerns and agitations by Nigerians about the excessive use of force and, in some cases, extrajudicial killings and wrongful conduct by means of the Nigerian police force. The disbanding of SARS is only the first step in our commitment to extensive police reform in order to ensure that the primary duty of the police and other law enforcement agencies remains the protection of lives and livelihoods of our people. We will also ensure that all those responsible for misconduct or wrongful acts are brought to justice. We also deeply regret the loss of life of the young men in Ohio State during the recent demonstrations. I have directed that the circumstances of his death should be thoroughly investigated. Meanwhile, it is important to recognize that the vast majority of men and women of the police force are hardworking and diligent in performing their duties. The few bad eggs should not be allowed to tarnish the image and the reputation of the force. your skills and capacities for better productivity? Then you need to attend the following courses organized by NTA TV College JAWS, Protocol Event Management and Public Relations, date 2nd to 13 November 2020, Intermediate Camera Operation Techniques, date 2nd to 13 November 2020, Intermediate Online News Reporting Skills, date 16th to 27th November 2020. The course fee for the four-week course is 100,000 Naira per participant, while the fee for other courses is 80,000 Naira only. Accommodation inclusive. Venue for all courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA Television College, near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws. For more inquiries, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, Jaws, training you to be the best you want to be. Mr. President said that the 
youth of this country have spoken than he has had and he has since gone to work for the youth of our country not just as a president but even as, as a father of the younger generation the real nigerian youth is a patriot not a tool of destabilization mr president made an appeal to the nigerian youth that this protest wherever held should be done in a peaceful manner the nigerian youth should be on their guard to make sure that elements that will infiltrate and distract them from the very purpose of their protest should be prevented from doing so listen to the voice of reason Thank you very much for joining us. Um, after the mayhem unleashed by hoodlums last Friday and Saturday in the name of NSAR's protests, Calabar Metropolis is now calm, we hear, with security operatives positioned at strategic locations throughout the city. A drive round town portrays a sordid situation, deserted roads with federal government agencies was hit. Building of the West African Examinations Council is completely burnt. Other offices vandalized are National Identity Management Commission and Industrial Training Fund offices, while a yet-to-be-inaugurated filling station was also not spared. The town has come as officers are on the lock and key, with a 24-hour curfew still in force. Meanwhile, security agencies are taking stringent measures to recover stolen items from the looters and return the city to its peaceful status. And President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has reassured Nigerian youths that the National Assembly will collaborate with the executive to ensure justice for victims of misconduct and rights abuses by personnel of the disbanded Special anti robbery Squad of the Niger Police. A statement by the President of the Senate explained that in a bid to discourage impunity, the legislators will insist that the perpetrators of the alleged abuses be prosecuted and sanctioned as appropriate. Senator Lawan said the National Assembly will also work with the executive to ensure that the five-point demands of the NSAS protesters, which the government has committed itself to be fully implemented. He also noted that the National Assembly is fully committed to putting the necessary legislation in place for comprehensive reform of the police to enhance their institutional integrity and efficiency. Well, still talking about hoodlums' attack in parts of the country, joining us via Zoom now is the Chief Press Secretary to Kwara State Governor, um, Rafiu Ajakai. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, now, well, okay, what can you tell us now is the status of security in Ilori, in the state capital, after we hear of the imposition of the curfew? Well, Ilori is calm, Ilori is peaceful now. Uh, everything is in order. Uh, those who have earlier had uh, some government facility business concern is stored at the moment. Okay, the audio there we're hearing, it's really poor from Mr. Ajakai. But if we can fix that, we'll definitely rejoin him. Let's continue with other issues. Following the recent hijack and fallout of NSAS protests, the Nigerian army says it will not allow any force in or outside the country to destabilize the nation's democratic system that enhances socioeconomic development. Well, this was the highlight of a crucial meeting of the chief of the army staff, Lieutenant General Tukubrate, principal staff officers, general officers, commanding and, you know, and field commanders, commanding and field commanders held in Abuja. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the acting director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Sagir Musa, conveyed the Army Chief's message to journalists. He directed that they, PSOs, GOCs and field commanders, must reiterate to all their subordinates that the Nigerian army is determined to ensure democratic stability in Nigeria as the only fantasy for development and progress. 
that there will be no room for disloyalty amongst all officers and soldiers of the Nigerian army. The Nigerian army explains that it acted professionally since the commencement of the protests to avoid a grand plan by detractors to tarnish the image of the military. He charged them to show the detractors and other elements of destabilization that they are neither a part of them nor in any way supportive of their activities at all times. He directed that any act of arson or attempt to kill or maim any military or security personnel and other law abiding civilians must be responded to quickly and decisively. The army stressed its loyalty to the civil authority and charged principal officers to cooperate with the police and all the security agencies to secure the nation. The organized private sector of Nigeria calls for an end to violence and looting across the nation, appealing for dialogue for peace, security and economy of the nation to prevail. In a statement, members of the organized private sector of Nigeria says it is saddened by the scores of deaths across the country and commiserates with families of those who have died from this violent protest and looting by miscreants. Members of the group therefore calls on the police, the National Civil Defence Corps and all the relevant security agencies to do everything lawful in their power to put an end to the crisis. Therefore, they explain that the impact of the ongoing crisis on the economy have been devastating, as billions of naira have been lost as a result of attacks on businesses. Many are on the verge of losing their livelihoods, property, factories and infrastructure across the nation have been destroyed, with innocent citizens bearing the brunt of the outcome. Also worried by the increasing cases of vandalism and looting of public and private property in Plateau State and other parts of the country, various interest groups are interfacing with the Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Paul and Tallinn and Joss, towards changing the violent narratives. Rinret Silvanus Lot reports that the key players at the meeting are appealing for calm. In between the minister and the various interest groups is as a result of recent attacks on government and private facilities by hijackers of the NSAS protests. Mrs. Talen, overtaken by pain, said she is appealing to leaders of the various groups on behalf of President Muhammadu Buhari to be patient and calm as government is committed to meeting the demands of Nigerians. It is no longer NSAS. It is something else that we all need to rise up as leaders in the land, as religious leaders, for us to cry out to God and to do the needful so that we can calm the situation on the plateau. It's quite worrisome and I believe prayer is the key. Issues of poverty, unemployment and inadequate social amenities were identified as responsible for recent happenings in the country. Leaders of the various groups appeal to government to be more inclusive in governance and objective in tackling the issues, especially of youths who are the strength of any nation. It is without, without doubt that we condemn in total the attitude of, not the attitude of our youth, but the attitude of the hoodlums, the miscreants, the criminals that eventually creep in and hijack yes, the, 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 the aim and objectives of these um, yes. the, uh, agitators. We commend the government of President Mohamed Wari for taking measures uh, that, you know, to meet the demands of the protesters in good time. We expected by is that the president should have come out immediately, probably locate those officers and prosecute them immediately, openly, just as what happened in the case of George Floyd in the United States. The minister assured all the groups that their grievances will be taken to the president. She interfaced with leaders of Khan, JNI, women groups and the youths. In Joss, in Red Silvanus Lot, NTA News. All right, let's return to the conversation we earlier wanted to have with the Chief Press Secretary to Kwara State Governor, Mr. Rafiu Ajakaye. Um, he's going to be joining us now via telephone. Good afternoon again, Mr. Ajakaye. I hope you can hear me. Good afternoon. Thank you for 
having me. All right, now I asked you earlier the status of the security situation in Lari in the state capital um, after the imposition of the coffee. What can you tell us right now? Well, the situation in Lari is calm. Uh, people are now going about their businesses without let or entrance. Uh, of course, you are aware that uh, there was some situation, a security situation in the state, uh, particularly in Milan metropolis. Uh, some hoodlums uh, attacked government facilities and some private business concerns. Uh, as a result of that, the governor, in his wisdom, had to impose coffee in the metropolis. And today, everything is calm. Uh, as a matter of fact, the coffee has not been relaxed uh, to between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. Uh, every day on the further notice. Okay, but what efforts is the state government putting in place to ensure that they assist victims of these attacks? Well, His Excellency has announced 500 million naira support uh, for victims of the attack, particularly business concerns. Uh, every, everybody concerned has been asked to go online to the website of the state government to apply so that there will be uh, a regime of transparency and accountability. Uh, people will go there, register, and of course, claims will be verified and uh, appropriate actions will be taken. So His Excellency has taken action in, in that regard. Okay, are there all the strategies, you know, put in place to apprehend some of these, you know, hoodlums to prevent future occurrence of such attacks? I didn't get that question. I said any new strategies put in place to ensure that they apprehend those um, victim um, hoodlums so that we don't have a future occurrence. Well, security agents and the government are working uh, together to ensure that we do not have such a situation. As a matter of fact, what I said is not known for this. Uh, what happened uh, certainly does not define who we are as a people. And going forward, every step will be taken to ensure that we do not have such a thing in the state anymore. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Rafiu Ajakai. He's the Chief Press Secretary to Kwara State Governor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right, let's bring you back to the Federal Capital Territory where we hear that hoodlums on Monday morning vandalized and looted items stored at a warehouse in Gwagwaleda Area Council of the FCT. Hawagimba brings us a situation report right now. Barely less than 24 hours of hoodlums vandalizing Nema Warehouse in Jabida Kibu, another group of hoodlums in Gwagwaleda Area Council raided the warehouse in the area. The masses have taken the laws into their hands. Breaking into the quality center, destroying everything. We have a couple of casualties. This rowdy rush right from the main entrance into Guagualada is not caused by a crisis but the lawlessness of the people. It is a free-for-all situation as residents of Guagualada in their numbers trooped into the warehouse amidst security presence and made away with as much items as they could, while others saw it as a business opportunity to make quick money by selling some of the items by the roadside. Hawagimba, NTA News. The South East Governor's Forum is meeting with the youths from the zone on the need to pull out of the NSAS protest. The chairman of the Forum and Governor of Eboin State, um, David Umahi, made this known after their virtual meeting with selected youth leaders from the zone in Abakalike. Kinsley Okoro reports. The meeting is coming after hoodlums hijacked the NSAS peaceful protest across the country. Governor Omahi said the leaders of the zone acknowledge with great pain the ugly event that led to the destruction of lives and property across the country and called for accelerated investigation of the unwarranted shooting and perpetrators are brought to book. The leaders of the South East geopolitical zone acknowledge with great pain. We are equally very pained by the destruction of critical infrastructure, public and private institutions and businesses. Deeply concerned and pained by the erosion of the mutual trust between the ethnic nationalities across the country, which has widened and greatly threatened our national unity and cohesion. When commanding leaders of other zones in their efforts to strengthen the unity of the country, Governor Omahi appealed to protesters to down tools as government is working hard to fulfill their demands. In Abakaliki, Kingsley Okoro, NTA News. 
A high-level stakeholders meeting held in Yobe State has reiterated stakeholders' support to the federal government. The meeting also appealed to protesting youths to choose the path of dialogue and allow government to fulfill its outlined promises on reforming the police, among other measures. Mustafa Yusuf Musa brings us details. With no youth protest for or against the answers in Yobe State, the stakeholders' meeting, which attracted all the 14 first-class emirs, national and state lawmakers, heads of security personnel, political and public office holders, deliberated extensively on the ongoing violent youth protests in some parts of the country and declared their support to the federal government. Leading the proceedings, the Minister of State for Works, Engineer Abu Bakr Aliou, and Governor May Malaboni appealed to the protesting youths to see reason and stop the violent protests as the federal government has lined up measures to meet up with their demands. The stakeholders believe that for progress and development to take place, tolerance, dialogue, and strategic engagement to resolve all differences must come to play for peace and unity in the country. In Damatru, Mustafa Yusuf Musa, NTA News. The Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission, Reverend Yakubu Pam, has called on Nigerian youths to exercise their trust and accept the promises of President Muhammad Buhari in addressing their five-point demands. Reverend Pam made this known while briefing the media on the current state of the nation. He called on the youths to embrace peace and dialogue as the only panacea for enduring resolution to their demands. Somebody is there laughing and say, okay, it has happened, it has happened. Let continue to laugh. The day it touches you, then you know how bad it is. This to me is a strange spirit that is coming to this country. It's a spirit that we must tell the youth, this is not the way a decent African youth should behave. We must cut this thing off. Reverend Yakubu Pam also commiserates with the families of innocent Nigerians who died in the recent Ansars protest. Minuguri is our next stop, and we join Mohammed for our next set of reports. Mohammed. Many thanks, Ruth, and welcome, esteemed viewers, to Minuguri. In a move to augment the productivity of automobile technicians so as to meet up with the global challenge, Bono State Government has pledged to establish Mechanics Village and training centers for members of Mechanic Association. Governor Babagana Marazulu made the pledge during a meeting with members of Automobile and Technicians Association, as well as motorcycle and generator mechanics at the Government House May Degree. Yagum Subuka reports. Governor Babakana Umara Zulum disclosed that a committee will be inaugurated to cite a suitable site for the mechanics village, in addition to the already identified one along Dombua Road. On the issue of training, Governor Zulum urged them to make submissions to government, assuring that they will be provided more training in computer for some of their members. He equally called on them to submit names of three members from each of the unions for the training. Similarly, Governor Zulum had directed them to submit names of 1,000 members from each of the unions for empowerment who will be selected from across the 27 local government areas of the state and assured to support urgent members financially since they are no longer productive. Chairman, National Association of Automobile Technicians, Borno State, Husseini Mohammed, and that of Borno State Motorcycle, Tricycle and Generator Mechanics Association, Jibrin Hassan, both requested for establishment of mechanic village and training centers for their individual unions, empowerment, and support to their aged members. In my degree, Yagum Subukar, NTA News. Towards enhancing security, two and five brigade of the Nigerian Army based at Sheraton Hotel in Meduguri will be relocated to Dalwa, a suburb community along Dambua Road. Governor Babagana Marazulum stated this when he visited proposed site for the relocation of the military. Mohammed Goni now reports. The establishment of the super camp in Delwa, according to the governor, will enable people to live comfortably from the areas surrounding the metropolis and engage in economic activities. We are gradually expanding the, 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 the territory of the Nigerian military so that the communities can easily move within the Maiduguri and its environs. What we have done this morning is also to ensure the re-establishment of the 25 communities that are staying within Alaou 
and Badagal Timari community. So you're looking at the trajectory. Uh, that means by relocating that this these villages, I think from these villages you can come straight to Delwa. We have some villages, Minari and others are there. So that means we are creating a circumference a radius of not less than 20 kilometers. The governor added that 500 houses will be built at Dala and that bricks kept along the Mboa Road will be deployed to Delwa for work to commence. The governor disclosed that the clearance of shrubs along the Mboa Road was stopped due to the rainfall. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NT News. That is it from this end. Nationwide continues in Abuja. Over to you, Ruth. Thank you, Mohammed. Let's take a break. We're back shortly, so you stay tuned. A scorecard like no other. Government has put in place measures and initiatives principally targeted at youths, women, and the most vulnerable groups in our society. These included broad plan to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. The creation of 75 billion Naira National Youth Investment Fund to provide opportunities for the youths and the micro, small and medium enterprises survival fund, through which government is A. Paying three month salaries of the staff of 100,000 micro, small and medium enterprises. B. Paying for the registration of 250,000 businesses at the Corporate Affairs Commission. C. Giving a grant of 30,000 Naira to 100,000 artisans and guaranteeing market for the product of traders. These are in addition to many other initiatives such as farmer money, trader money, market money, and power, and tech, and and agro. These and more in spite of a recession and a global pandemic. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. My name is Nando Jamda. Mohammed. Stevita. Hussein Musa. Rodima Joel Tinji. Saeed Musa. John. I'm a carpenter. I've been doing this for more than eight years now. And I said that Lantin. Naka Ikimami Shekara Uku. I've been selling my tomatoes for about ten years now. And I do it for a better Nigeria. And I do it for a better Nigeria. Now, when I say that, the money is going to be a little bit. And I said, I'm going to be a little bit. And you can see how we are doing our small little work to make a Nigeria great. As you can see, I'm a technician. And I'm doing it to help myself and to help my generation. I'm not going to be a little bit. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Thanks for staying tuned. The Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Anire, has accompanied Edo State Governor, top government functionaries and heads of security agencies on an inspection tour of the pharmaceutical warehouse in Benin vandalized by hoodlums. During the inspection, the governor announced government's intention to unravel the root cause of the breach at the Edo State Pharmaceutical Warehouse. The medical store warehouse serves as a safekeeping facility for medicaments and equipment supplies. It serves all hospitals in the state. There were visible remains of large quantities of vaccines and other drugs and equipment scattered all over the vicinity. 
Governor Basaki described the action as anti NSAS protesters. He wondered why looters would damage what belongs to them, especially when the state government is doing all it can to strengthen the health care system. The amount of destruction and theft that would have occurred here will be running into hundreds of millions. Um, this is a healthcare system that is already weak, that we are trying to do all we can to strengthen with the assistance of the federal government and fed other agencies. The health minister, Dr. Sagi Yanire, said it is unfortunate that funds which ought to be spent on other needs of the people will be returned into purchasing the stolen drugs. I'm very disappointed. Uh, they will probably regret the, what has uh, become of it. Uh, it's going to be uh, very difficult for Edo State because uh, all the things that have been damaged or vandalized here now, somehow the other have to be replaced. The Commissioner of Police revealed that over 50 persons have been arrested in connection with the looting of the medical storehouse. He debunked allegations that life ammunition were used on the people. All right, elders and some youths in Imo State have joined all the Nigerians to call for an end to the violence arising from the NSAS protests across the country. They have made their views known in a weary while, stressing the need to give the federal government a chance to fully address their demands. In Kiru, Onye Jesu um, gives us details. Legitimate and peaceful protest is right of every citizen of any country, especially in a democratic setting. The reverse, however, becomes the case when violence takes over. While the NSAS protests may have started as a peaceful one, recent events have shown a total hijack of the process as it has turned violent, highlighting the handful effects of the protests and the need to put an end to it. An elder statesman, Chief Emmanuel Iwanyawo, urges the youth to give peace a chance, especially as the federal government is already addressing their demands. Developments in the past few days have been very embarrassing. We have seen that people who actually are not the conspirators who are doing demonstration, who lost, have infiltrated the system and have started uh, breaking houses, burning houses, burning government institutions. Uh, breaking people's doors, stealing things, and this is actually not the character of the use. Other indigents of the state, including some youths, also commend the federal government for ceding to some of the demands of the NSAS protesters. I commend the fact that um, the federal government has asked the well, governor to set up the judicial panels to investigate um, some of these murders and brutalities. That is okay. They have laid their complaint. I think as a father, as a father of youth, I should be able to tell them it's a high time for them to allow the government to perform. They also note that the unity of Nigeria Nigeria should be paramount even in the face of any demand. In Oweri, Nkiru Onyejesi, NTA News. The Nigerian Governor's Forum has called on Nigerians to disregard allegations from some media quarters accusing it, um, accusing it of hoarding COVID-19 palliatives aimed at assuaging polites of the vulnerables. The Forum says the palliatives, which were part of the goodwill of Nigeria business community through the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, had up to 10 states to cover as at mid of October 2020. The forum regretted the tragic looting at the strategic warehouses in Lagos, as well as all the parts of the country where consignments were stored ahead of the projected second wave of COVID-19. The Nigeria Governors Forum says it has remained committed to the welfare and security of the people and has shown adequate concern over the alleged brutality of the disbanded SARS, as well as instituted measures to address demands raised by the genuine protesters. The forum advised citizens not to undermine the good efforts of government in ensuring that the economy is put in good shape for the benefits of humanity and the country. 
Well, the Nigerian army has restated its commitment towards building and sustaining um, civil military relations with a view to strengthening correlation to fight insecurity in the country. The chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tukuburate, disclosed this in a message at the distribution of palliatives and medical outreach to flood victims in KB State. Organized by 8th Division Nigerian Army, Nura Tangwakili will tell us more. Hundreds of internally displaced persons forced out of their communities by a flood in some parts of Kebi State received palliatives and medical attention from the 8th Division Nigerian Army as part of 2020 Nigerian Army Day celebration. The beneficiaries amazed by the unexpected gesture said it changed their perception of the Nigerian Army for the better. I never expected this from the military. We thank them. He says we thank God for giving them the wisdom to remember us. We thank God. The chief of army is having a message delivered by the general officer commanding 8th Division, Brigadier General Amin Ubandi, said the gesture was part of the military civil relation activities to enhance correlation between the military and their host communities as security is everybody's responsibility. Who would have been here early enough when the thing was much more hot, but it is still not late. We are here on behalf of two army staff. One to carry out medical outreach. We have a whole lot of drugs, a whole lot of professionals, doctors that are here to support the communities. The general officer commanding tax parents on proper parenting and enhanced communal relationship as panacea to emerging security challenges in the country. The Kebi State government commended the Nigerian army for identifying with the government and people of Kebi State in the trying moment and assured of continued support to security operatives in the state. Wholeheartedly thank the chair of army staff for honoring uh, KB State and for finding it uh, this in, uh, fit and necessary uh, for army to maintain that corporate social responsibility by uh, coming up with their own contribution to our flood victims. The Nigerian army distributed 2,015 kilograms bags of rice and other food items. 200 bundles of roofing sheets and will spend three days attending to the health care needs of the affected communities, including referral of special cases to Nigeria Army Hospital. Nura Tanko Akili, NTA News. And still on the Yami, the air and land components of Operation Thunderstrike have neutralized scores of armed bandits in a joint offensive operation to clear identified bandits' camps in Yadi and Kufaishan, two areas of Giwa local government area um, in Kaduna State. The operation, which was executed on 24th October 2020, on the heels of credible intelligence reports and aerial surveillance, helped in the identification of the bandit's leader and his fighter's hideouts. The first wave of the air component's airstrikes, which involved seven Nigerian Air Force aircrafts, destroyed some of the target structures and neutralized several bandits. The second wave of attacks, which targeted the bandits' hideout at Kufaishan 2, also incapacitated the bandits and reduces resistance to the ground troops advanced towards Yadi. The land component, supported by an attack helicopter, successfully assaulted another target named Halilu at a hideout. The ground troops subsequently fought through fierce resistance from bandits, hiding under the foliage at the third objective and eventually overpowered the criminals and eliminating them. And sport updates is next as we join Adenike Kinem. <laughs> 